This video is sponsored by Raycon. Oh boy, it's a classic, the Super Mario Bros movie. I get the suggestion a lot, and yet I've never seen it, so thank you Cosmic Gamer and Buzzy Figment for suggesting it on our Discord. 1993, huh? I was minus three. There's a lot of expectations I have here, and since we're still waiting for the very real animated Mario movie coming out one day by Illumination, I guess this will just have to do for now. So, let's get into it. Uh? Ah, of course, with Mario being surrounded by dinosaurs somewhat, I guess this would be the direction we go. But, you know, I'm not a paleontologist, but I don't think modern skunks were about 65 million years ago. Just a hunch. Alright, already off to a great start. Where's it going next? But what if the dinosaurs weren't all destroyed? What if the impact of that meteorite created a parallel dimension where the dinosaurs continue to thrive and evolve into intelligent, vicious, aggressive beings? And you lost me again. This is record-breaking confusion. This idea was construed from THE Super Mario? Whatever, I'll dig into the details of how later. Let's just get beyond 10 seconds in. So we get your cliche abandoned baby scene with a mysterious woman delivering a child and a rock, except that the child is actually an egg, and the woman is killed by an accident underground, and the egg accidentally hatches a baby, and a nunnery will have to raise it. Yeah, I'm with you, sister. I have no idea how this works at all. And then we jump forward 20 years. It's just gonna be a load of this, isn't it? Hey, it's the Mario Bros. Now apparently 15 years apart and not Italian, but American. Okay, at least they're plumbers. So they rush off to work only to be duped by... Scapelli. They beat us to it again. Another lost job! I didn't realize plumbing was on a first-come, first-served basis, but hey, at least someone's willing to go to Italy. So Scapelli is your classic corporate villain guy trying to continue construction on an archaeological find headed by this student. He threatens her in his slimy ways, and she is stalked by a couple other baddie minions now. And fun fact, most of their lines are improv. And you know... Yeah? You sure? Two arms, one head, two legs. It pays off! So skimming ahead, because let's be honest, Brooklyn isn't exactly the most interesting place here, the Mario Bros bump into the student. Oh, she's Daisy. Luigi is romantically interested, and they set up for a date, uh, a double date, I guess. So who is this? And one brief chat later, and mysterious girl is kidnapped by the goons. Meanwhile, Daisy shows Luigi the excavation site, and Scapelli have flooded the place. So they teleport home, then teleport back to the site in record time to fix it. All the while, Mario... Scapelli. Yeah. Strap your bone on, kid. We're going in. Mario's in the murdering mood. Mario's aggressive. So they fix the pipes, the goons are back again, and they now finally get their target Daisy. Sure. And finally, we're to enter Dino Hatton through some sandly rock. How the hell did that happen? Also, that Mario scream is gonna like haunt my nightmares. Can we hear that again, please? And what better way to lock in that nightmare sound than with some good quality earbuds? What are you doing? And if you go to buyraycon.com slash daz, you can get 15% off your order. Stop it! I personally received some Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds, and yeah, they're pretty good. Giving you six hours of playtime before needing a charge with a nice noise isolating fit for your ear. It's got seamless Bluetooth pairing and a chunk more bass. That was definitely what I noticed first. But since I get to keep these now, I'll likely be using them this summer when I finally get to breach the outside world and experience the beach this summer uncompromised. Well, what about me? And with things presumably opening up this summer, now's the perfect time to integrate Raycons into your summer plans too. It'll be a real game changer. Great for working out, public transport, or just cleaning around the house. That's been my go-to so far. So remember that's buyraycon.com forward slash daz to get 15% off your order. And it'll seriously support me as a creator too. Seriously, I got a gig with Raycon. You gotta help me impress them, please. And with that all done, let's return to the video. Do I get a cut for this ad? No. Okay, so here's the hook of the film, a massively wacky set of a parallel dimension in the Mario universe. What is this design? Like, Spike Punk? The biggest inspiration for this film was Super Mario World, and with that taking place on the vacation island of Dinosaur Land, here's their reinterpretation, with the likes of Spike being cast next to 
Iggy? Weird choice. And it's really bold to have icons of red and green the wrong way around. But apparently it was quite innovative from a digital effects perspective. I mean, I said it in my first reaction. Ah, good to see Doctor Strange is doing nicely. <laughs> So budget 90s Maya Hawk is swept away and the bros get disoriented in town. And here's a first look at the real villain, King Cooper, wanting to capture Daisy for her rock to merge dimensions. What a plot. Again though, who is this? Ah, okay, yeah, it's Lena. You know, that unforgettable Mario character, Lena. And then there's a new Toad being a musician with stripes for hair rather than spots like, you know, in the games? Who gets arrested as do the plumbers for being plumbers. Are you following along? Cause this is almost giving me a headache. Here's a brief break for the both of us. If you haven't already, subscribe. Or come check out our sister channels for highlights, clips, or VODs. That middle one is new. Check it out as we are to roll out some short content, basically. It's the best moments of our streams. More are coming soon. Or here, instead of listing everything, take a look at our schedule. Now that's a lot of content. Links are all down below, or go to hashtag DazReviews. And if you want bonus reactions of this video, go to our Instagram. <sighs> so the Mario's are catalogued, steamed, dunked, drizzled, chained, and eventually shot. Mamma mia. And then they get to meet Cooper. They argue over a poorly scripted miscommunication and are taken to the Devo chamber. Just spectacle after spectacle, ain't it? Here, Cooper has a Devolver chair, able to take the busking political critic Toad and turn him into a Goomba. Wait, so in this canon, Goombas evolve into Toads. Why? Why did they make their heads so small as well? Weren't they like 95% heads in the games? What's, what's going on? So the bros push Cooper into his chair and de-evolve him back to the Jurassic area, just like that. Man, that's an easy fix. Except it doesn't do much, because the plot demands it, I guess. And if you think you're getting on board with this warped cannon now, I'm afraid there's still more. The bros need to escape, so they zip line, steal a police car, and what follows is the most mind-melting chase scene I've ever seen. This goes on for two full minutes, and it doesn't hold back on every opportunity to just show some sparks and fire. The bonnet sparks, the spoilers spark, there's fire guns, they hop onto another car, there's a fire pit, cars are thrashing around, the roadsides have sparked. I imagine the directing went something like this. We need more fire! Oh, Jesus Christ! And they bungee jump out of the lands. And that's without all the plot and dialogue in between that similarly makes little sense. Get the face! There are no brakes! Face is up! Though also apparently Bob Hoskins broke his finger on set during one of these driving scenes and wears a pink cast over his finger for most of the film. Wow. At least we got some weird goofy 90s music playing underneath, making it feel like a Home Alone spoof or something. Moving on, Spike and Iggy get evolved now for being such idiots, which makes you think, why hasn't Kuba chosen to evolve himself? But whatever, and the result is no physical changes again, just wordier wordplay. Daisy, meanwhile, is plucked by Lena to be dolled up for Cooper for some reason, and now there's a handheld de-evolution gun because the plot demands more convenience. And then there's a final Mario character adaptation, a direction that isn't as disgraceful as the others, but still weird, Yoshi. Being realistic and yet cute. Hmm. <coughs> Sorry, I mean, that's where I expected the scene to go, you know? That's what I would have done with the character. It makes sense to me, no? What follows next is just a lot of plot. Let's skim some more. Daisy's a descendant of dinosaurs. Iggy and Spike are still idiots, but join the Mario Bros. They sneak back into town by disguising as... Oh, were they Sniffits? That's cool, if they're being Sniffits. Was a Sniffit invented yet? I think so. And they hit the town. Bold of them to suit up in vibrant colors that are red for Luigi and yellow for Mario. Also, this scene is kind of adult, yet the directors wanted to go further. According to Leguizamo, they shot all sorts of explicit bits with strippers and all, but of course it was cut out later. Especially with Disney buying distribution rights weeks before filming, causing them to downgrade massively anyway. Still, this is going on trying to nab the rock from that lady who stole from them like an hour ago. This seems to be a running theme, but who is she now? Is this some turn on Birdo without the dino connections of Yoshi? Oh, 
Oh no, she, she's Big Bertha. There's no interpretation of fish in this film like Cheap Cheap, but when you see what Big Bertha looks like in game, oh no. Apparently across several, several rewrites, there was an earlier, more lighthearted version that was replaced for this more adult and feminist approach. Feminist in that it added more to the female characters and introduced Bertha, but yikes. So after some five star wooing from Mario, the name's Mario. I'm your main man. You ran with Dane, you can't explain. I'm your main man. Yeah. <laughs> they get the rock, Bertha is enamored, Lena crashes in, they lose the rock again, the goons are captured, and they use those jet boots to escape. Is this meant to be Mario's super jump or something? It's not great. At least have Luigi running while in the air like Mario 2 or something, you know, like it exists. I know it's 93, but there were some Mario games. Whatever. They make it to Koopa's lair and finally they don their iconic colors properly. <sighs> As for Koopa, he orders the minions to be killed, even though technically one of them is his own son. Lena professes her love, gets upset that he's all about business right now, and then goes against him, plotting to merge the world herself using the rock that Koopa doesn't know she has. This is a stupid plot line of jealousy. So now, Lena goes to kill Daisy, which will upset literally everyone, and gets attacked by Yoshi as she tries. But man, I really wish they included the sound effect for it too, you know? <laughs> Daisy escapes, bumps into the captured minions, and then the Goombas blaze up the Toad Goomba. I don't know why, I've rewatched it several times. Was it a sacrifice, a mistake? This directing is hard to fathom. Whatever the case, he's extinguished and the trio leave with an audio glitch to boot. Father, what do you know about my father? Come with us! And apparently this fungus is Daisy's dad? I guess that would title her Princess Toadstool, kind of. Yoshi appears, then disappears, the Mario Bros reunite with Daisy, Mario goes on a quest to save Daniela, titular Mario character there, Koopa discovers Lena's gone rogue and just happens to bump into Daisy and Luigi immediately of course, and Lena is arrested. Only Mario's free. I hate this. Continuing the list, he dupes some Goombas, they prep a mattress and slide down the pipes. And sure, I guess this is fun. It's got your classic 90s music track over the top and some Goombas are doing the same. One issue though, kinda hard to miss. Why aren't these pipes green? I mean, come on. Still, you can have fun with this sequence. And they crash onto the main street again, freeing Luigi and Daisy too. It's final fight time with Cooper, which during the middle of Lena freaking dies. Oh, she's alive from there? This really is Home Alone 2. She goes to merge dimensions and then actually dies. Meanwhile, Mario, oh, this almost looks like a parody at this point, brings out a tiny, faithful bob -omb. Everyone freaks out. He never lights the fuse and just lets it pitter-patter tidily towards Cooper until it falls. Okay. And because of Lena's earlier actions, Mario is snapped with Cooper. Look! It's Cooper's tower! Oh, that did not age well. So Mario and Cooper end up in Manhattan now. He grabs the Devo gun and accidentally zaps Scapelli. You know, remember that guy? Turning him into an ape. You saved me. Why? Monkey! <laughs> and then, just as quickly as they arrive, they're teleported back as Luigi severs a new media piece. That bob -omb is still walking, everyone has their own mini moment to the event, and the bob -omb finally explodes, dropping him back into that cauldron. But we're still not done yet! Now, he's in full T-Rex form, they shoot him some more, and he finally becomes some primordial slime. And with their leader dead, everyone cheers. The Goombas are never re-evolved, Toad never comes back, there's no character reunion with Iggy and Spike, but Mario and Luigi leave, Daisy stays there, Yoshi appears, and then the fungus regrows back into being a human. I'm back. I'm not even gonna pretend to understand how this works. I'm done. And they're given the title of Super Mario Brothers by the news. Also, Daisy blazes through requesting them again. Yeah, like they were ever gonna make a sequel. Oh, and as a post credit scene, some Japanese developers approach the now in Brooklyn Iggy and Spike wanting to make a new game, the Super Cooper Cousins. All right, so that's how it all ties in. The end. 
wasn't even a cameo from the company. My brain has become primordial slime after all that. Sheesh. Never before have I actually had a movie give me a literal headache trying to understand, but it's understandable after all of the mess development had. And I had to cut so much from this video. Actors literally didn't know their lines most of the time because of rewrites. These two even made an improv rap song, but it got cut out. Whilst others reportedly exploded on set at the directors over it. There's horror stories of one director pouring coffee over an extra for not looking dirty enough, whilst it's an open secret that Leguizamo and Hoskins were drinking throughout the production. And it's a shame, because this is an incredibly bold adaptation, and I can kinda respect that. But while Shigeru Miyamoto said it was too Mario and not enough good fit, film, there's also a whole lot of liberties away from Mario that didn't do it any favours. Mostly though, it's the convoluted plot that lets it down, which is like the main thing I look at anyway. How did Daisy get here if the portal was only unsealed recently? Why hasn't Koopa been walking through the portal since it opened like his minions if he wanted to be there? Guess we're gonna gloss over that Daisy discovered her own mother's bones? Why was that one guy slapping the egg baby? Imagining this movie going more adult sounds horrible, even if that's what all the actors expected. I mean, there's already some Nazism with a quick little Hail Cooper line snuck in there. And I don't want to get any more explicit than what was already implied. Of course, this film soon enough got its cult classic status with people praising the visual effects and the theme of trust the fungus being like the force. And I gotta admit, it's certainly not boring. It lost $10 million, but that's not the worst I've seen, and the acting is actually pretty good, tipsy or not. There were all sorts of other potential cast members in some parallel reality to ours, or different stories like an existential road trip idea, because, you know, enough adaptations instead of road trips. But I don't think anything else could have come out as such a beautiful mess as this combination. Dennis Hopper had to stay three times longer than planned, the directors were kicked out after filming so couldn't be part of the edit, Hoskins didn't know it was a video game movie, and Nintendo never even voiced a complaint. I guess they just watched with bewildered eyes and then made the CDI games next year and learned their lesson. But who oh boy, considering how much stress this put on everyone involved, maybe it's best to tape over this production with that glossy animated illumination project instead. I for one am gonna sit down and contemplate the parallel dimensions that had this running as an actual franchise. New Mario characters and all. Ugh. For now, go check out our Instagram story for a million more reactions and content. My name's been Daz. Next week, we're covering a cancelled animated movie, not as big as, you know, Mario, but at least made by a prominent studio. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.